it going? So recently I posted something on a, a vegan Facebook forum. Something along the lines of, I'm hoping to adopt a dog soon, I want to raise him or her vegan. If any of you have got any advice or tips, please do let me know. I was fairly taken aback by the response. People were saying how wrong I was to raise a dog vegan and how unethical it was. So in a way, this video is for you guys and any other vegans who think it is wrong to raise a dog vegan. But obviously, you guys who aren't vegan, please stick around because you might learn something do. So here we go. Reasons dogs shouldn't be vegan. Dogs are descended from wolves. They are carnivores and need to eat meat. Research has found that the differences in DNA between wolves and dogs fall into mainly two categories. Behaviour traits, i.e. how we got from the temperament of a wolf to say a golden retriever. Starch digestion. Dogs have evolved to digest starch better than wolves. Dogs are classified in the order carnivora, but this group also includes species like raccoons, skunks, and also the giant panda, which is a herbivore. From a biological perspective, dogs lack most of the metabolic adaptions to a strict diet of animal flesh that are seen in true carnivores, such as cats or ferrets. Dogs produce more of the enzymes needed for starch digestion. They have much lower protein and amino acid requirements and they can easily utilise vitamin A and D from plant sources, just like people do. All of these factors make them more accurately classified as omnivores and not carnivores. Dogs can't get all their nutrition from plants alone. The pancreas produces the digestive enzymes that dogs need to digest their food. Most dogs' pancreases work really well at this job and do very well at breaking down starch from plants. Vet nutritionist Dr Kayleen Heinz uses meat-free diets quite a bit to help manage various health concerns in dogs. She says their systems can derive nutrients from a wide variety of sources including fruits, vegetables, grains and legumes. So if vets are choosing a diet free of meat and dairy to improve the health of dogs, and these diets are in fact improving the health of dogs, does that not tell you something? Several studies have shown this. Another study was done back in 2009 on 12 sprint racing Siberian Huskies fed a meat-free diet for 16 weeks. This included 10 weeks of competitive racing. Health checks were done. All dogs were assessed as being in excellent physical condition. I also want to mention the story of Bramble, who held the Guinness World Record for being the oldest living dog at the time, thriving on a completely vegan diet. She now holds place number four for the eldest dog ever recorded. You shouldn't put your ethical beliefs on a dog. Okay, does the diet meet the dog's nutritional needs? Is the diet tasty? When fed the diet, is the dog healthy? If the answer to all of these is yes, then any objections to the diet could be construed as being based on prejudice. Generally people couldn't care less about, and I'm sure know very little about, the food given to the animals that get turned into dog food. It's highly unlikely ancestors of the cow were chomping on mounds of genetically modified soybeans, for example. So an ethical objection to vegan dogs seems at odds with the general acceptance of the exploitation of animals for food production. And finally, the old hypothetical gem. If given the choice, a dog would choose a hamburger over a bowl of broccoli every time. If given the choice, a child would choose a bag of sweets over a bowl of broccoli every time. Does not mean it's the healthy choice? So now you're hopefully a little more clued up on the topic, here are some more reasons dogs should be vegan. There are a lot of horrible things in pet food. Dun dun dun! Pet food has different labelling requirements to human food. EC permitted additives covers a multitude of sins, including 4,000 chemicals and artificial colours banned for human consumption. Meats and animal derivatives can cover anything scraped off the slaughterhouse floor, while derivatives of vegetable origin is so so broad it can include things like charcoal, contamination with salmonella and listeria and a range of other potentially pathogenic microorganisms can occur. Within the US, 11 major recalls of pet food occurred between 1996 and 2010 for reasons such as these. 4D meat from animals that are diseased, dying, disabled or dead on arrival at the slaughterhouse are labelled using such terms as meat derivatives or by-products. Due to the expense of labour costs, plastic ear tags are not always removed, old supermarket meat is used, sometimes without removal of styrofoam packaging. A variety of medical substances from farm or industrial practices, some of which are illegal, can also be found. Fish, commonly used in pet food, often contain mercury and PCBs which accumulate in their tissues, can reach hazardous levels. Fish decompose faster than other animals and with lengthy transportation chains there's more chance of decomposition and things getting 
really nasty. And for that extra je ne sais quoi, things like free radicals, trans fatty acids, hormonal residues, chemical preservatives, and other toxins from restaurant grease used as a fat source can also appear any your dog's food. It's not surprising, therefore, that a load of controlled studies have shown increased risk of a variety of diseases in dogs on these foods, including kidney failure, liver, muscular, skeletal and neurological diseases, birth defects and bleeding disorders. Here doggy, there's your yummy food full of absolute crap. It isn't natural to feed dogs bits of chopped up farm animal parts. People presume that domesticated dogs should eat meat because prey animals were eaten by their wild ancestors. But just have a think about the ingredients that go into meat based diets and compare that to the nutritional needs and preferences of wild dogs and wolves. Domesticated animal diets include body parts from cows, sheep, pigs, turkeys, ducks, chickens, fish and prawns, some of which have been labelled unfit for human consumption. Cow's milk is also commonly fed to cats, even though some, like humans, are lactose intolerant and they get upset tummies. In contrast, the diet of wolves consists primarily of animal protein from larger prey such as elk, with the nutrient-dense organs consumed first, followed by muscle tissue. Clearly there are significant differences between the prey these animals would naturally consume and the species routinely included within commercial meat-based diets. To encourage our dogs to eat such diets, dry food is often sprayed with a combination of refined animal fat, lard, used restaurant grease and other oils that are sometimes considered too rancid or inedible for human consumption. Something named digest in the industry is also commonly used. This is a mixture of partially dissolved intestines, livers, lungs and miscellaneous body parts of chickens primarily and other animals. In different combinations various flavours are produced. When wild dogs or wolves kill prey they gorge as much as possible to prevent consumption from competitors. This is followed by uncertain periods of hunger. In contrast our dogs are fed from tins or packets at predictable times daily with some food being available around the clock. They are frequently microchipped, vaccinated, dewormed, defleed and desexed and confined indoors at night. Clearly we are willing to depart quite radically from naturalness in other areas. A vegan diet, if done responsibly, would on the whole be scrutinised much more closely to make sure all nutritional needs are met. Because a vegan diet is currently not the norm for a dog, a lot more care needs to be put into the preparation of food and supplements. Indeed this is the case for commercial vegan brands too. V asserted that their diet is formulated to meet or exceed the nutritional levels established by the AAFCO, with their production facility being staffed with animal nutrition experts and vets that conduct regular tests on the food post-production to ensure its nutritional adequacy. Another big brand, PetGuard, asserted that they conduct home feeding studies to determine the performance of their diets in an actual home environment. Having done this for the past 20 years, they are confident and pleased with the data that shows their diets will form as a single source diet for long-term health and long life of dogs. The vegan diet has been proven to improve the general condition of the dog and reduces chances of things like ear infection and obesity. As stated on the harbingers of a new age website, studies and numerous case reports have shown that nutritionally sound vegetarian companion animal diets appear to be associated with the following health benefits, increased overall health and vitality, decreased incidences of cancer, infections, hypothyroidism, ectoparasite, for example fleas, tick flies and mites, improved coat condition, allergy control, weight control, arthritis regression, diabetes regression and cataract resolution. Numerous happy owners of vegetarian dogs have told of their experiences in Pedden's 1999 vegetarian cats and dogs where they reported all of the above. Another example is the story of Cleo, who, after recommendations by her vet to go on a vegan diet, rid herself of her chronic ear infection, her coat had taken on a healthy shine, and she no longer had bad breath, dandruff, or excessive shedding. A survey of 300 dogs by Peter back in 1994 concluded things like, the longer a dog remains on a vegetarian or vegan diet, the greater the likelihood of overall good to excellent health. Veganism is more beneficial than vegetarianism, and the longer a dog remains on a vegetarian or vegan diet, the less likely he or she is to get cancer, infections, hypothyroidism or suffer from obesity. And my final point, you're not indirectly funding the animal agricultural industry, which in turn saves animals lives and tackles the problem of global warming. And on that note, you're not being a hypocrite. How can you be so concerned with a dog's health but couldn't care less about the millions of animals who are tortured and slaughtered, who, after deemed unfit for human consumption, gets turned into your dog food? It's been said that owning a dog could have twice the environmental impact than driving an SUV. But pets aren't the problem. A meat diet is.
Today, greenhouse gases from livestock outweigh those from the entire global transport system. And you only have to watch my last video to see what animals go through in the meat industry. Taken from Veggie Pets Online, the death and suffering inflicted upon approximately 50 billion chickens, pigs, sheep, cows and other animals, both intensively and extensively farmed, who are slaughtered annually and upon similar numbers of intensively farmed or wild caught fish, in order to fulfil the desire of some human beings for meat, has been thoroughly documented, as have the deleterious environmental impacts of both intensive and extensive animal farming. And it's worth noting, it may also come as a nasty surprise to pet owners, that many meat inclusive pet food companies have been involved in invasive tests on animals. So in conclusion, I have the following. In answer to anyone who thinks it's unethical and immoral to feed a dog a carefully planned and monitored vegan diet, I point the finger right back at you. I believe it is abuse to knowingly feed your dog parts of animals that aren't fit for human consumption. When there are an increasing number of scientific studies showing that a vegan diet can be the best diet for a dog, when the way we currently feed dogs is certainly not natural, when a vegan diet tackles the bigger issues of animal cruelty and global warming, how can you possibly turn around and say it's wrong? Things are never black and white, but at least have the gumption to research and learn before you cast such unsubstantiated, subjective remarks. Oh, and to the woman who said I should get a herbivorous rabbit instead of a dog, you know nothing vegan lady. Thank you for watching, please let me know your comments below, I'm sure you will, but more importantly please check out the links below for further reading and more information on the topic. I'm not gonna play you a song to summarise everything I've just talked about. Please subscribe, I'll see you next week. Dogs are not wolves, just like humans are not apes. A lot of years made sure we don't work the same way. How I wish that I could swing from tree to tree. But dogs are like wolves, no more than apes are like me. Thousands of years ago, a wolf and human met. Wolves protected humans, and humans gave them food They couldn't be that choosy, and so the palate grew Fast forward many millennia, and dogs are man's best friend We feed them what we want and clean up after the other end But we don't really know what goes into their food I think that if you did, you'd change your attitude a clean and healthy vegan diet might sound a little odd But you're the ones giving animal byproducts to your dog The parts that we as humans do not see fit to eat Leftover bits of carcasses ain't ethical to me And now our dogs get cancer, our fat have heart disease Keep telling yourself that's the natural way to be Dogs are not wolves, just like humans are not apes A lot of years made sure we don't work the same way How I wish that I could swing from tree to tree But dogs are like wolves, no more than apes are like me Dogs are not wolves, just like humans are not apes A lot of years made sure we don't work the same way How I wish that I could swing from tree to tree But dogs are like wolves, no more than apes are like me